not sure if I'll be able to catch up. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe it's a good it's a good thing because um, we can do a catch up of what we did last week. Just to recap, um, I think oh, it's a good me. it's a good idea for learning purposes. Just quickly. Um, so we started, and actually I haven't put any um, paint on my palette yet, so I'm just going to get some black and some white. But neither have we, so what should we get? So I'm just going to do a final tone check with the, with the black and the whites and the grey. So, so my process, the first step, Alice, I mean, why am I calling you Alice? It's because the bottom of your screen has Alice. I know. She so change it. I feel Don't like worry. changing Alice it to is Jane. In Wonderland. <laughs> okay, so so Jane, um, the first step in my process is to do a, a tonal representation of whatever you're painting. So uh -huh. just using black and white. So I'm I'm just getting some black and white on my palette now, and then I'm going to do a tonal check. And I did grab a ruler because I thought it's um. I could just show you it's a little bit handy at times or you could use a corner of a book or anything and we can just check the horizon line a bit but to be honest um, it's only it's only something that you might do to please yourself really it's not necessarily going to make your painting any better sometimes okay. You know, if you look at um, a lot of landscapes, the, the sometimes a really perfectly straight horizon line, it's too perfect and it won't, it won't, won't look any good. So, so I don't think we need a ruler really. But so I'm just putting some black and white on my palette. And um, so there are many different kinds of black. I mean, I was using this Payne's Grey, which is a very dark grey. Um... But it then, comes out blue, doesn't it? If you don't put it on very well, with watercolour, it comes out blue. If you don't put it very deep, okay. so what what colour is that, Kay? The black? Paint's grey. It comes out blue a little bit underneath. Yeah. So I think you bought a. It doesn't watercolour. It doesn't watercolour. Yes, and actually, Kay's brought up a really good point about colour. Um, because it does change uh, a little bit depending on what medium but also depending on what kind of paints you're using as well slightly um, because they'll, the, they'll, the pigment will behave differently sometimes you might have a heavy body paint or you might have a, a sort of more drippy paint and so the, 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 the tone that you get will be a bit different yeah, if that makes sense. So, okay, now I've got some black and white. Um, I'm going to just have a look at what we've been doing on... Turn around and see what... Um, now, I'm just thinking, have I got all my paintbrushes? So, also, um, Jane, we yeah. talked about paintbrushes, sizes, <laughs> yeah. and I really always recommend to start with a much larger paintbrush than maybe you're comfortable with okay so um these ones are about one inch wide there's a flat one and there's a rounded one oh, so, lovely. so yeah. either either of these are good um to start with and jane have you got your reference picture that we're painting from yeah i printed it out okay so so I've, have you is that a color or a black and white I did both good so this is a black and white. okay so so what you can do is we did start upside down and yeah. just try and map out these black and white areas so we yeah. we started by um, just doing a, a I think it was a dark gray and a white so the white we painted the in the um, the hills in the background and the sea were white because they were the lightest tones in the picture yeah. but we sort of put them all in together as the first step and then the black or the dark gray was just all the trees in the foreground oh, cool. um so when i say all the trees in the foreground i think we also included some of this uh no no i think that was it wasn't it just all those trees and then this was all all white yeah, I think that's what we did, didn't we? Brilliant. Yeah. Um, 
and then the next step was to um, do a mid-tone, a grey, but, but uh, uh, between those two colours. So what we do is we get um, either ends of the tonal spectrum, so the darkest um, tone and then the lightest, and then we put in all the greys in between to build up. So something like this, which has more graded um, greys. So that this is more, it's got all the tones, but actually there's more tones to put in on here, but not, not that much. Um, and actually, I don't think you want to go too detailed with the tones. I feel like actually that's probably enough detail to go with the tones. Yeah. Um, you know, there's some really light coloured bushes here, but we can put those in um, afterwards. So I don't know, if, is this making sense, Jane? It is, but I don't want you to focus on me because yeah, I... no, you can just crack on when you when you understand what 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 you need Go, to do. Go, Jay. Yeah, I really appreciate you explaining it to me. That that definitely helps. Makes it. Oh, that's clear. okay. I mean, I feel like it's a good recap for everybody. Thank Was, you. Is that helpful? Oh, should should we use the chat? Well. Or you uh, can... I haven't got white, and um, I haven't got all that many colours. Okay. Uh, Kate, so... you, you haven't got any white paint? No. Oh. Um, but I've got a very, very light yellow. Oh, oh. oh. What oh, colour okay. yellow is it? What side of yellow? Um, lemon yellow. Oh, <coughs> sorry. I'm going like that because I just feel like... That's a really tricky yeah. yellow to work with, Kay, because a lemon yellow is very um, bright. Um, um, right. So you want to definitely have a more neutral colour than le lemon yellow. Uh, a, a Naples yellow would be okay. That's quite a neutral, whitey yellow. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I think you want to stay away from the lemon. What about ochre? Well, uh, I just uh, feel uh, like that might be a bit dark, Kay. Yeah. Um, so, what what can Kay use to make the white, the light, bring the light into the picture? Because um, I feel like in a landscape, to create that depth, really white is your most important, yeah. you know, it's not a colour, but shade. Especially when it comes to doing the sky and things, the minute you put a straight blue on the sky, it will just really make it into an illustration and we'll lose that kind of sense of 3D. Yeah. So I'm just wondering, but you could use something else. Have you got any white, um, uh, like uh, pastels or chalky yeah, things or I, anything I, like that? No, I don't. I've got some white uh, watercolour pencils. Oh, that'll do. That'll work. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that'll go work. for the white watercolour pencils. Um, that's cool. That might be really good, Kay. I mean, to be honest, it's nice to mix up your materials like this, I find, um, because it brings out different marks, different ways of making marks within the picture, and it can make for a really interesting picture. That it just can broaden, broaden the kinds of marks you're making on the picture. And so, Kay, we might be able to turn this hurdle into, you know, something special, okay. which I think... I'm just saying that it give you an example of the mindset you want to have to 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 be oh. doing this creative stuff we're doing. I thought I had white, but I don't. Okay, so <laughs> have you got any other art materials, Kay, that might have a white? No. Like for instance, I've got a chalk pen which I sometimes use. Oh, no. I wish I could give this. I wish I could pass this to Kay. Yeah. I know. Because chalk pens you can mix with all sorts of mediums. They're fantastic for just bringing a bit of light chalk into pen. an area. But you probably need a bit more white. Have you got any um, um, talcum powder, Kay? Yeah. I wonder yeah. if that would work. I'll try it. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. Susan, have you got an opinion on that? What do you think? Sorry, I've got some... Well, I was thinking along. Sorry. Yeah. 
Yeah, I was thinking along the lines of um, household paint. Has she got any emulsion or anything yeah, like yeah, that yeah. lying around? I'm sure. Of course, yeah, yeah. Well, she's gone off to get the talcum powder now. Uh, I mean, talcum well, powder could have been the craziest suggestion. Or all those will work, yeah. Yeah, I just don't want it to go all gluggy. Or gluggy, yeah. What is she? Is she in waters or acrylic? She's in watercolour. Oh, right. Beg your pardon. But she could mix... Pardon. Yeah, well, she, she can still use a bit of both. I think she could mix the talcum powder with the paint. Yes. I mean, just see what happens. But uh, I don't think... Um, yeah. I think, I mean, obviously, I think your suggestion is much better to use the household paint. Anyway, remind me to ask Kay when she gets back if I forget. Okay, so... We were thinking I was thinking, right. yeah. So what do people... Thank you, pardon. Pardon? Beg your pardon. That's that's fine. My partner's sat in the background. Oh, is he putting <laughs> his two cents in? And he came in? up with motion paint as well. So it's his Oh, well idea. done. Oh, my God. <laughs> Has everybody else got, like, people outside the frame advising them? That's cool. <laughs> Bring them in. Bring them into the picture. Does he want to paint too, Susan? Bring them in, yeah. My dog. Yeah, bring the dogs um, in. Yeah, no, I, think he, yeah, I think he could join in. Well, I hope, Sarah, maybe we could get to some dog painting. If we, if, that would be great. Um, not not today, though. Okay, so, Kay, how'd you go? I've got some talcum powder and some toothpaste. Wow. <laughs> wow, toothpaste. Girl. Well done, Kay. I'm just loving this creative thinking, Kay. You are awesome. <laughs> I, I was going to write these tips down. I really do. <laughs> someone suggested, yeah, you need to have the white toothpaste. I'm, I'm not. I hope you haven't got like the blue gel or something, Kay. We can, we can save that for the. So I know. Uh, uh, and uh, maybe the blue will be good for the sky. The blue gel. Oh, I just, I just tipped over my palette, and my <laughs> white paint went all over the floor. So that's good. Oh dear. I'm just gonna. So I just picked it up. There's my white paint. I'll just put it back in the palette. Um, so, Kay, have you got any white house paint? Uh, um, we're in the garage. And no, not really. But right. you just not it next, so. Okay. I think it's yeah. more fun using things, um, using those two things, because yeah. it will give you an experimental mindset, which is okay. It's a way to go. Okay, go for yeah. it. Um, Okay, so what's everybody else up to? Is everybody happy with their, their tonal representations of the landscape? No. You're not happy? I'm just, I'm just a little bit low fancy to put too dark a grey on because I'm going to be putting watercolour on top of it. Yes, so I think that's a good idea to not, to not go too dark if you're using the watercolours, Bridget. Can I just show you what I've done? Yes, please. You see that? Oh, can't see Bridget. Bridget, you, you, you. your video's gone off. Oh, God, She's gone it? off. Yeah. Oh, right. Hang on. I'll go back in. Here we are. Right. I must have pressed the wrong button. <laughs> oh, wow. That's it's looking stressful. great. Okay, so... I, I, yeah, fantastic. Well, I put, I put the sky in because I was getting a bit worried and... Um, yeah. Then I had to put the green in and then I had to stop. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, it's good that you stopped there because I can see um, the sky, um, how you were tempted to put that in. Totally, totally understand. But I feel like um, that, that, that's, okay. that's okay, but we're, we're well, not going to get to the a sky. A lot of it's going to be covered up with leaves, you know, from the trees. Yeah, um, yeah. And you can you can go with a bit th a thicker paint with that yeah. so that it goes over the dark grey or any bits. But I think that will work. You know, it's not such a bad thing to have those tonal variations. If you do think, oh, I've gone a bit dark there, and then you go over the top of it, um, you know, the, the shadows behind the leaves, that that might look really good. Rather than... Right. You don't want to have a white, uh, the leaves... On a, um, a a lighter what? background, no. Because unless we're in the in the sunny Australia, which we're definitely not, then <laughs> the middle of the tree behind the leaves will be a bit shaded. You know, it will be a bit darker. So does that yeah. make sense? 
Yeah, yeah. Mm. I'm a bit lost as to what to do with the wood of the trees, you know, the, the trunks and all that sort of business, but I'm sure you'll explain. Oh, well, the thing is, I mean, this, this is what... Um, so what we need to approach our painting, and this is why I go upside down, is because I don't want people to think like, this is wood, this is leaves... And, and this is this colour and this is that colour. Because the minute you sort of break, put those breakdowns in, then it becomes like an illustration, yeah? Whereas in, um, in this instance, and when I, I guess we're trying to do a really cohesive work, where everything sort of comes together in a landscape, doesn't it? In, in, in like one scene. We want to keep the um, cohesion, and I feel like we need to approach everything um, not as different uh, subject matters, but as um, as as one thing. So, for instance, um, we're really looking at because our eye doesn't make those distinctions. When we're looking at a tree, you might sort of think, "Oh, it's it's sort of." starts the bottom of the trunk is a bit warm and as it goes up the tree it gets a bit cooler as the shadows come in and then it goes a bit darker up the top where there's more shade or I mean that's that's the way we're going to get to a, a good painting because then you'll have a tree that looks all like one thing if you make if you're getting my uh, analogy whereas if you're thinking it separate, then you're going to be like, oh, the top of the tree is green, bottom of the tree is brown. And we want to get away from thinking about things as in different colours. We want to think about colours in terms of warm tones and cool tones. Warm colours and cool colours. I don't even know if tones is the right word. Colour tones. Well, now I'm having a... Um, but let's just think in warm colours and cool colours. Instead of like leaves, trees, sky, clouds, da da da. Does that make sense? So that's yeah. that's my biggest wish for today. My biggest intention is that when we when we're approaching putting color onto this landscape, that we we just are looking at where the cool areas are and where the warm areas are. But whilst we're doing that, we'll probably go, oh, that's a bit dark and, and, and put a bit more white in and stuff. Or in um, Kay's case, a bit more talcum powder. <laughs> so, Kay, how's it going there? Have you started mixing? Trying, you could just do... Just starting to, yeah, just starting to mix. Okay, so shall I give you, shall we start with some colour? Is everybody happy to begin with some mm -hmm. colour? Yeah. Because... Yeah. I, I might just quickly have a look at what I've done here because I haven't looked at this properly since last week. But um, I think I'm fairly... The only thing I think is the horizon is coming down here. Whereas I think on the picture, this horizon of the sea, where the sea meets the land, is going up a bit, isn't it? Hmm. I don't know if people can see that. What are you it, saying? So I'm saying, Sarah... Sorry, I missed you. That uh, the thing that makes me most unhappy, because it's only, you only concentrate on one thing at a time in your painting. So once I've finished up this thing that is making me most unhappy, which is the, the horizon of where the sea meets the land, there'll be another problem which will make me unhappy. So, but at the moment, it's um, the th one thing I want to fix before we go on to colour. It's just this this bit here it needs to be this horizon line needs to go up a bit needs to be a bit higher on this side you know so but everybody else if you've got something that's annoying you in in your painting right now can some does someone want to share so I just want to share that I've turned it back upside down yeah and I've turned the thing I'm painting from upside down again because I think I need to do that. Because otherwise I'm being too literal in my approach. Yeah. So I just wanted to share that. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for sharing that because I, I feel like this would also help everyone as a reminder of why we do the upside down. And also, Jane, 
I thought I, I thought you were frozen for a minute there, but you were just being really still and really <laughs> listening. Thanks for that. Um, so we went upside down so that, like Sarah said, we, then it becomes like a literal landscape. And we what 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 we want to do is we want to see it more abstractly, so that we can get things in the right place. Yeah. So this this for instance, so when we go upside down with this, it's much easier to see where the horizon line is and how far up the yeah the picture it is whereas when you go like that it's 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 too easy to fall into a kind of like prejudgment about where horizon lines should be and you know and I, especially when we we come I'd like to at some point paint portraits and dog and where things go on people's faces and how they appear you know I mean, if you want to do a good portrait, you really have to abstract it out, you know, and see that actually a nose could just be a horizontal smudge, like, yeah. rather than a triangle, you know. So, although, um, oh, so, sorry, I kind of went off pissed a bit there again. <laughs> I like the upside down trick. I think that's really good. Yeah, so it's a good trick. And then I did mention, were you here last week, Jane? No, no, you weren't. So I did mention about uh, Renaissance painters and, and, you know, other Western, the history of Western art where people did try to reproduce um, the way that a sort of realistic interpretation of nature and landscape. They did use lots of mirrors and rulers and upside down and, you know, looking over your shoulder in a reflection and all those sorts of things because... Um, it was much easier to get the the angles right and where things were. So, yeah. so we could do that with our colour. But Ooh. first, I'm just going to fix up my horizon line. So, if anyone else wants to share something that's annoying them about their painting um, that they're going to fix up now, I prob yeah. I probably need to get myself a paintbrush. <laughs> I know somewhere there's a jar full of paintbrushes. Oh, here it is. Um, oh, here they all are. Because I just cleaned them. Okay, so I'm going to use this um, brush, which is about half an inch. So I would, I mean, I don't think we need to go much smaller than this, Jane. Okay. Um, but even when you're doing your big, uh, just the darkest areas and the lightest areas now, just use, use as big as brush as you can, really. It's, you'll be fine. Um, okay, so I'm going to fix up this horizon line just because that's annoying me the most now. So I'm just going to mix, like, just the tiniest bit of black in the white to mix... This this really light grey here. Um, and always, re, you know, referring to my picture. See, this goes, this goes definitely. Definitely, this goes up like that. Yeah. And I just think, Doing that, I, that, that's immediately, I'm like, oh, thank God. I, I feel like that's improved the sense of distance. I, 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 and I mean, that just it's just looking at this. Yes, Dorothy. I can't hear you. Oh, yeah. The sound is gone. Oh, it's okay now I can hear you. Oh, no, I can't. Someone else must have said that. Oh, Dorothy, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Sorry. Uh, um, I'll just write in uh, the Maybe, chat. Dorothy, do you want to do a chat? Uh, I can't hear Dorothy. Um, There's a button on your screen, Dorothy. Um, I'm it's, to it's strange, isn't it, Jane? Because everybody's unmuted. 
It's not Dorothy, can you smash can you... through it. Pardon? Can you hear me, Dorothy? This is Bridget. You yeah. got to the left, left, right hand side of your screen. There's a like a little microphone which might be on mute. Yeah. I, I don't think it is that. Press Sorry. Uh, now, she, now she's on mute. No, she's off mute. It's something else. I think what... Uh, it's it's your computer, Dorothy. Do you want it? Can you write in the chat what's your problem? Or challenge? No problems. Just challenges. Ah. Uh. Okay. I can. Okay. Is that Dorothy? I don't know. Dorothy, the other there are three there are three little buttons up on the right hand side. Two, three little dots. If you click on that and go down to the bottom, mine says disconnect audio, but maybe yours says connect audio, in which case you need to connect it. Yeah, I didn't know if it's a Zoom thing because it's showing that she's connected. Well, my, my volume is breaking all the time when I'm listening to you. Is it? Yeah, it might be her connection. Oh, okay. Maybe um, she should sign off and sign back in again. Yeah, because that's, yeah. Works. that's an excellent idea, Sarah. Dorothy, do you want to go and come back in the room again? There she goes. Okay. Um, so, does anyone else want to share their their issue, or are they happy with their tonals? So we can crack on with the color. Yeah, crack on. We crack on with the color. Crack Just on. thumbs up. We're gonna go for the color now, Kay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just going to. So the, the black and white. We'll just lose that. And I'm going to my colour um, picture now. And what I did was, so I printed that one that's got colour. Um, and then I printed one which just turned the colour up a little bit, just for demonstration purposes. It's not really okay. that different. It's just a bit more colourful. Yeah, it's not really that different. So, oh... So if I go upside down like that. Right, I'm letting her back in. Back in. See. Hi, Dorothy. Right, you should be connected now, Dorothy. Mm. Ah. No, I can't hear. Oh, oh. hang on. But she sent a message. I can see her chat. She's saying the sea you have painted what colour? Yeah, so we're not worrying about different areas as being different colours, okay? So I need you to sort of all be with me with this because it's my number one intention for this class is that people, we're not looking at different areas being different colours. I mean, different things being different colours. But we're just looking at the picture as a whole and where the warm and where the cool colours are. And and I know immediately looking at this, I'm going to regret choosing this um, as a landscape because it's got the colour green in it. And I just feel like green is a really tricky colour to work with. Um, one, I mean, I'm hoping people, we won't, we won't do any greens. You know how we're just working with blue, cobalt blue and um, a yellow ochre? We're going to mix our greens from those colours, yeah? So, so we can see we've got a bit of blue in the sky here. And then there's green here. I'm just talking about the sort of areas. So this is cool. The cool areas down here. And then it, we've got warm areas at the front. And that in itself will give us some depth and distance within the paintings. Okay, because 
cool cool colors and blue tend to give the effect of receding and the warm colors and the cool colors tend to give um, a kind of coming forward effect coming forward does that make sense and then blue colors recede um, cool colors recede um, okay so does that make a bit of sense so we get, yeah. we're get we aiming at the picture at a hole that we're going to have some cool and then we're going to come into some warm up here. So we could either start with some cool colours and also we'll have some cool colours in here where the shadows are. And also some cool in here around the edges of the hills where there's shadow. Okay? Well, we'll start, maybe we'll start with... Um, do we want to go upside down for this? Yes. Yes. Yes, please. Okay, let's go upside down. Okay, so we do we want to start with cool? Should we start with cool? Because I know someone started with the sky here. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> That was, um, and then, and then we're all back together on the same track a bit more. Okay. So, so shall I do a little um, blurb about painting sky? I mean, okay. we could do a whole. Oh my god, it's eleven thirty-six. We could do a whole thing on painting sky, but I'll, I'll basically the. Um, I did write a few notes about painting sky. Oh, nothing. Um, this is really. This is the simplified version which is really actually harder than you think to come across um, and that this is this is my sort of oops um, sorry I've got my trolley too close to me I need to push it out the way there we go um, so I start with a little bit of cobalt blue up the top because I've already got that for my palette and then I would go to a cerulean blue, which is um, quite. Uh, what can I say about cerulean blue? This is cerulean blue. So that is. Um, I mean, that to me, that's quite a warm blue as well. So this will, I guess, give us effect of. Um, you want to have a lot of spaciousness in your sky. So also these can change depending on what the weather is and depending on what your style is. And actually, um, if you haven't got cerulean blue anywhere else in your painting, it might be even um, tricky to, to use it in your sky. Um, but the main, the main colour in your sky, or not colour, but paint you'll use will be white especially in England where skies are grey quite often and I think the sky that we're looking at in this picture whilst whilst it's it's blue at the top all of this it's quite cloudy so there's going to be a lot of white um, mixed in with the blue because we've got this kind of here this kind of Tupperware sky i don't know if people know what i mean when i say that tupperware sky it's like that gray you know like the inside of your tupperware um container uh, yeah and it's just like that gray yeah so i feel like this is what's happening down here and then up the top there's some bits of blue so what we'll do is we'll put in this blue but also there looks like there's some pink warm bits here in this blue can people see that because I feel like yeah. you know that's kind of getting into a bit of color detail because actually you could just paint that as a, as a bit of blue and um, but it has got a little bit of warmth in here and there's these clouds that have a little bit of warmth a little bit of pink so you might we might put a little bit of red on with mixed in with the white when we go to do the clouds but but I actually and we don't want to think that sky the clouds are completely separate because I can see 
the clouds kind of do go over the, the into the blue sky a lot as well uh -huh. so the way i would approach this upside down sorry it should have gone upside down here is to go with a little cobalt blue and then but lots of white and then put it going into cerulean or if you've got um I don't know what blues people have got. So I'm afraid um, I've actually packed almost all my painting things away. Yeah. So I've got, for some reason, out two tubes of ultramarine blue, but that's all I have That's out. all right. Ultramarine blue will be fine. I mean, okay. I think I would use ultramarine blue. So that was for um, if there's a dark sky... But, but very white, lots of yeah, white. Yeah, so lots of white and you'll be fine, I think. Okay. I think, well, the reason why I say ultramarine blue is probably one of the most flexible of the blues um, because of the way that the pigment behaves. Okay. Um, it's much more like, I don't know, what's the word, see-through sort of thing. Whereas if you, oh, yeah. if you had a... If you had a Prussian blue, then I would get a bit worried because it's really hard to come back from a Prussian blue. It's very thick and heavy, and right. Whereas ultramarine, it's it's not a it's not a bad blue to have in your palette. What blues of other people? Yeah, that's the word. Thank you, Sarah. Um, what other blues have people got? Have you? What have you got, um, Kay? I've got I've toothpaste. Got, I've got ultramarine, but I've got. Um, oh, not all that very many, but okay. I've got this one, which is, uh, Prussian blue. Yes, yeah, stay away. Th <laughs> throw that across the room, Kay. <laughs> yeah, now we'll stick to the ultramarine. Okay. And, and what, what have you got, Susan, Bridget, Dorothy? I've got those corresponding with what you said there. Okay. Yeah, I've got the same as you. So you've got some cerulean. Great. Yeah. Fantastic. And then... Um, um, Dot, sorry, Dot, we can't hear you still. You'll have to... You'll have to chat. You, you know, we saw your chat that you did earlier, so that worked. The C, so don't worry... What we're going to do now, this is all going to be one blue that's going to go up to this hill. So okay. this is going to be included in the sea, okay? So okay. we're not thinking, and this is getting back again to how we're going to do a really interesting cohesive painting, is we're going to put that um, really light white with a, just a little bit of blue going all the way up to this green, okay? want to go all the way up to there. That... So the sea and the sky and the hills in the background will all be this really light shade, really light, mostly white, okay? And then we can get put in a little bit of detail later. So we can put in these sort of warm bits of um, yellow ochre for the hills over the top of that. And that will, that will, trust me, trust me, that will be good. So we're going actually from the bottom of our page, which is upside down. Yeah. Right up to the areas that are um, at an angle, sort of. Yeah. Goes yeah. Down. yeah. I mean, okay. you could almost... So you could go to here or you could go to the darker line there. Okay. It won't, it won't matter because okay. at the moment we're just at that level of like a little bit of this white, cool background colour. So... But... You can also put your blue where it's the sky's bluest here. But please, I would really recommend staying with a really big paintbrush, okay? So so not getting smaller than that because um, if you do your sky with a smaller paintbrush, it just won't make sense because, because there's really no definite... Um, smaller changes of color this is here or tone it's kind of all one 
And the best paintings I've seen, if you look at the skies of Turner or, you know, any of the masters, um, the clouds are really, um, it's just, it literally, it's really painted really with a thick brush and without, not painstakingly, but really kind of almost painted in a way to reflect the kind of sky this is. So this is quite a wintry, billowy kind of sky. So you don't want to go in there with like little puffy, sheepy clouds, definite, like it was a blue summer's day. You really want to go in there with a thick, a thick winter brush. I'm getting a little bit poetic here, but get, get go in there with a thick winter brush. And even when you go to do your blue, just do it like in two strokes really quickly. And, um, and then if you think, oh, that's too dark, then just go over it really quickly with a white. When I say really quickly, um, maybe not quickly. So if it, what I mean is not to think about it too much. Um, okay, so if you, I'll just demonstrate what I mean. So I'm going to put my colour, my colour one here. Where's my bulldog clip? I'll put that there. I can, I can move it over here, can't I? Because... Yeah, so that's giving me an easy reference. See my notes here? I mean, so a little bit of cobalt blue up the top. I might put a little bit of that on my brush. But mostly I'm going to mix up a white with a tiny bit of cerulean blue on my palette. Here we go. Also, don't forget to take to hydrate. This isn't wine, by the way, Jane. <laughs> Cheers. I'm not drinking on the job. Cheers. What are you drinking? Tea, but, but it's a little bit cold now. Really cold coffee. <laughs> oh, cold coffee, yuck. No, this has got apple cider vinegar in it. Oh, sounds disgusting. Oh. It sounds disgusting. But believe me, I've got... I've got um, this is from the local orchard. It's very good. Anyway, I mix it with water. It's not pure apple cider vinegar. I just want to say that. <laughs> I'm not crazy. So where can I put that? I could put that there. Can you see that? Yeah, see there I've got my notes in front of me about what I'm doing with the sky. Okay, so lots of white. I might get some more white. This is titanium white, but, you know, just use any white. Mix for mixing, so, you toothpaste. Know, <laughs> toothpaste, yeah, that's right. That's right. That will give me nice white teeth if I just put a bit of that there. Yeah, I, I won't it's do a that. One. Yeah. I actually have um. Anyway, that's that's um. Another story. So I'm going to get a tiny bit of cerulean and cobalt blue. So I'll put that in a different area of my palette. Yeah. So. And. and so that I don't put too much in with the white. And then have to get a whole other lot of white. So I've got that blue. That's. Oh my god. I just put ultramarine. See this is why I need notes. Uh, glasses. See I've already got them. See here's my. The, the cerulean. That's what I meant to do. I know. No, sometimes it's just hard to talk and choose the right paint colour at the same time. So there I've put some cerulean blue there. That's ultramarine. I've got to remember that that's ultramarine, not to touch that. Um, although, because some of you are using ultramarine, I might be able to put a little bit of that um, in with my white. And then I've got some cobalt blue. And so the cobalt blue, that was just going to be a little bit here in the corner. Um, so maybe I'll just 
I'll just do that to start with. I don't know. That seems a bit breaking it up, but maybe I'll just start with. So I've mixed a bit of cobalt blue and white. Oh, I put it straight in, that's why. Um, okay, so how are we going? Is 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 as everyone started? I'm I'm being a bit slow in, in my demonstration. So I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. So I'm just gonna I've mixed up some cobalt blue and white here. I'm just going to put a little bit of that here on the edge, here. Da, da, da. I mean, I might go a bit darker with it. Because I, I feel like the top of your painting with the sky, it's nice to have it like a little bit darker. Some darker bits just to give it some depth. Yeah, so I've got a little bit of cobalt blue there, but I really want to crack on with this cerulean um, and white mix that I'm doing now. And to me, immediately I'm thinking, oh, maybe that's a bit warm. I, I want to put some, maybe I'll put a little bit of ultramarine in that. Just the tiniest bit. Yeah, just the, like the tiniest, tiniest bit and then. Oh, no, no, no. I don't know. Maybe. I think so. I, I, I prefer maybe I'll put some more cerulean in. But see, there I've mixed the blue there um, that I'm going to use for the, for, the, for the bottom. So for where it's a bit more blue. And then I'm just going to go back to like nearly white. So I'm thinking now maybe we should have left this patch of blue maybe towards the end. But anyway, there it is. So I've just done that, as you can see, and there's a bit bit here, and there's a little bit over here is quite dark. So um, ultramarine would be, but again, that's probably going into detail too much so I've done that I've put a little bit of blue in the corner there and now I'm just going to go back and mix more white in as as I go down the painting okay is that making sense because there is a bit of blue coming in here but I, f I feel like just um, let's just get it down Let's just get down the really light white colour of where the sky is. And um, if we want to add more blue later, we can. So I've just mixed up this really light blue. Really light. For the sky. Now, I know I said go over here. I'm going over here very lightly so that I can still see where the changes are. Is that making sense? And I'm just being really kind of like, I've left some white bits there, but I'm quite happy with that. So that's just a really quick Oh, there's no sky there, man. Okay. some some areas there's where it's you can see a little bit of pink in the sky I'm just going over it quite lightly to let that red behind come through a bit probably should have told you that before you went in and did your sky but um, 
I can't I kind of had to demonstrate to do it myself to realize actually that was a good that was a good thing to do yeah so I've done it really roughly I don't want to have any areas of completely flat white I probably should have said that at the beginning too yeah but this is this is all learning okay so how's that so you can see I've done it really roughly but um, I think it just brings it keeps it keeps it alive a bit more than just having like a whole flat area of color because actually this isn't flat there's there's quite if we go into details of the sky there's a bit of variation there um, so And there's probably a bit more blue that I, I haven't put in there. So I'm just going to mix a bit of blue on my thing and, and put that in. So I need to use the cobalt blue for that bit at the top here, I think. But just try not to go too dark with it, okay? And I'm not worried about getting that exact shape anymore. Because I, th I feel like you need to sort of keep it looking um, quite fresh. So, does that make sense? How, yep. pe how are people feeling? Okay. Now, I can see also there's some bits here where the sky, you can see through the tree. Yeah. So, you, we want to put those bits in now. Don't worry about like doing it exact, but try and keep the, if you put any definition, if you put any branches in or the dark bits of the tree, try and keep that in and just go over in between with the blue. Yeah. And also now that I'm looking at that, yeah, so there's bits here. So, so I'm just doing it, sort of dabbing it on with the, with the, with the brush. I'm not doing any sort of like flat areas of colour. Okay. So I'm doing it around the tree trunk, trying to keep that definition that was there before. Yeah. So I'm just dabbing it where the sky might come through. And the other thing I'm going to do now is like put some sky so that it doesn't go tree and then sky. But as you can see in the picture, if you look at your picture, there's bits of the sky coming through on the, around the edges of the tree. Can you see what I mean? Yes. So what yeah. you want what you want to do there is just sort of dab it, dab in bits of the sky so that you can keep some sense of the leaves or where the where there's the darker shade in that area okay so you might start to see that um that sense of a leafy tree is coming out as you kind of so don't worry about doing it exactly but just get that effect of of the edges of the tree being kind of um blur but having sky behind it if you know what I mean so in here and stuff Okay, now, so you've, you've, you've kept your definition of the trunks, the dark areas, and then we're just putting in sky. Now I'm going to go around the edge of this other tree, just where there's sky coming through. And this is a very, I'm using a very dry brush. So to do this, which I feel like, 
you want to do. Don't put too, don't put water on your brush at this stage. Keep your dress, dr your brush very dry because that will help you get that um, stippled effect around the edges of your tree. Um, I th I think so. Um, for for for, the, for these sort of trees, although you know, this none of this is set in stone. You know, because there might be a reason for having a wet brush if they were willow trees and you wanted to get that some sort of drippy effect or something. I don't know. But but for the purposes of these kind of bushy trees, I think a, we want to have a dry brush. So I'm kind of just getting rid of any edges, any kind of sharp edges between the tree and the sky now. Can you see how... Do you want me to turn it the other way? I'll just, if you can um, see what's happening. Ah. Angie. Yeah. See? Um, I don't, Angie, I don't know what happens, because uh, I'm hosting this Zoom thing from yeah. the HK. I don't know, Alice did say to me that sometimes it runs over, which is totally fine. But I don't know if a Zoom will close it, so hopefully... Oh, uh, haven't you got a professional uh, uh, business yeah. account? Yeah. You should just carry on? Yeah. Oh, well, we were able to carry on last time. It was fine. We're, we've gone over 45 minutes, which is like... Oh, so it's I just fine. Didn't... Excellent. I just didn't want everyone to suddenly go. <laughs> no. Oh, okay. Thanks, Jane. I, I cool. just... I. Can people see that? Because I feel like this is this is the, the 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 first step in what I was trying to my intention for the lesson today, which is not to think like sky and then tree, but rather we're blending it a bit. Okay, so can you see how by by stippling at the sky along the edges of where we had the black tree, and then can you see that the tr it's coming out as a tree now? Where yeah. you know the 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 the, the um, you can see bits of the sky through the leaves. Yeah. Okay. How's it going, Kay? It's ha all right. Did... Okay, I'm enjoying myself. Good, good. That's the main thing. That's the number one thing we want to just have fun with this. Yeah, yeah. We're not in um school anymore. Yay. Um. So we're just having fun and exploring. But th these are um. I'm I'm really interested, Kay. How, how, did you go with the toothpaste or the talcum powder? Um, well, the toothpaste uh, didn't work very well. Yeah. But the talcum powder did, but it absorbed all the water. What what absorbed all the water? The talcum powder. The talcum powder, it would, it would, wouldn't it? It was the chalk and. Yes. Yeah. So. It's okay. So were you able to make a paste with it? Um. Or not at all. Uh, no, it sort of uh, sort of disappeared a bit. Yeah. <laughs> I perhaps I didn't put enough in, or enough. Of, I was a bit tentative. Yeah. Yeah. A bit yeah. Little cautious, but, um, maybe just go for it a bit more, Kay. Yeah. <laughs> put put in more water until it goes pasty. Okay. Oh yes. Okay. Yes. I want to show you. Go on. Not my painting, but oh, oh painting. look at that beautiful doggy! <laughs> so I told you he was sleeping. Oh. He's really not watching. He's really sleeping. Well, what sort of dog is that, Sarah? Cute dog. Yeah. He's a um, he's a Spanish hunting dog. Wow. Called the uh, Bodeguera, and he's a rescue from Spain. Wow. Fantastic. Uh, he's beautiful. Thank you. That's great. He's better. He looks better than my painting at the moment. <laughs> well, it's a, it's a different thing. So, well, I mean, we're still at the beginning of our painting, guys. Yeah. So, um, but I really, I I hope that everybody was able to like stip all around the edges of the trees and get that sense of the sky behind the trees. Hey. I mean, what do you think? Do you think I got it? I don't know. No, no, no. I think it's all right. I think you have um, not only got this sense of sky, but also a sense of movement, which is very nice. Yes. And I think 
the, 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 the way I do that is just by turning off my brain and turning on my body and just kind of enjoying that, you know, that kind of do, 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 do. You know, so I'm not really thinking much about what I'm doing. I'm just knowing that we're kind of getting a bit of light through the trees here. The only thing I was thinking was I didn't want to go get rid of these branches. Yeah. Get, because, because the sky cannot be seen through the tree trunk. It can be seen through the leaves. So that's why it was really important not to go over the top of the tree trunk, I think, for the purposes of this picture, in this case. So if you did go over the top of one of your dark tree trunks, you could put it back in. If you feel like that ruined the sense of tree. Yeah, and the movement, um, so you want, yes, that was a really good point, to keep in the movement just meant you keep your brush going. So keep moving with your painting. So, and, and also, like going over here, this tree, and then maybe going to the other tree. So you're kind of moving all the time around your painting. Um, and actually... You know, we might be putting something up here. I, I just noticed actually there's a big bit here where it's, 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 um, there's some light bits in there too. So I might go in there with some white, but maybe not. Maybe we'll just do this sky bit first. So, so at the moment, I think if we finished by just, um, I said use a dry brush, but now I'm putting some water on my brush a little bit to just get rid of any um, any blocks. So I'm just going over it a bit more lightly now, just to kind of um, get rid of any straight lines or any um, definite... Um, what am I trying to say? So where it goes black and then white, so I'm just trying to um, s put some stipple in You're there. Just trying to blend any hard lines. That, so blend any hard lines. Thank you, Sarah. Was that Sarah? Yeah. Susan. Somebody Susan. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah. we're getting rid of any hard lines. So I've got a bit of water on my brush, and I'm just kind of like la 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 around the tree, and actually I'm doing it in a way that is creating some effect maybe of the tree as well so I'm going I'm going in in a bit and I'm not worrying am I making the tree too small maybe doesn't matter not worried so, about it so I'm just getting rid of any hard lines okay. and I'm and I'm just sort of dabbing it like that yeah because this is this is the way that we're going to do these leaves And I'm trying not to go over where the tree trunk is. Okay. So, um, the other thing I've, I need to do now that I need to look at my picture more. So I was just doing that to sort of show you what I'm doing because I feel like that's very helpful to get, to blend it like that. So even like that, it's like putting in a whole lot of leaves. I feel like boop, boop, boop. now it's more leaves on the tree um, yeah but always you want to be referring to your picture upside down or straight up whichever way you're doing it you want to be following following this ah so so that's I think we could say today's um, class has been about the sky just generally yeah um, yeah because I did laugh oh we could do a whole painting on the sky and actually we have and I feel like because this is a landscape painting we're doing it really warrants it because if you can paint some sky and see and you've got ways of making that look um, realistic or um, together with the land and things then we're halfway there we're definitely halfway there 
So anyway, I've banged on enough. I would really like to see what other people are doing and how they're feeling about their paintings, if that's okay. I want to show you. I'm happy to show you. I'm not very happy, but I think it's going to be fine. Later. Okay, so what aren't you happy with? So Sarah, the just... right-hand side particularly and the bottom. But I think I can get to what I need to do. I don't feel I haven't given up and I and I don't feel despondent. I'm just, I can see the things I need to work on. Yeah, okay, great. How about you? Pardon? What, how do you think? I do think it think? looks fantastic. <laughs> uh, and I, I would be really, really pleased with that. Um, I, I really, I mean, there's lots of good things that I could say about that. I like the way that you've used your brush strokes, the way that you've treated the painting as a whole has, is, is, is cohesive. So it looks like one picture. Yeah. So that's good. No, I think that's, that's great. So does anyone else want to go? Oh, show me Dorothy. This is fantastic. Fantastic, Dorothy. Oh, wow. So that's that's coming along. And I love the way, I mean, the, the sky is coming through the leaves there. And that can be anything else but trees. Yeah? So we weren't thinking there's a tree and there's sky. It's yeah. about, like, bringing it all together. And I, I'd just be thrilled with that, Dorothy. I mean, I think, yeah. Can everybody show them all at once so I can see? Yeah. Okay, this is where I want to do a print screen. Ready? I'm going to do it. Yes, set, come on. One, two, three. Yay. Oh, hang on. Ready? Sarah, show you yours again. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I, I, sorry, I'm this is just a, a, a group photo. Bridget, 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 where's yours, Bridget? How's that? Oh, yeah, ready? One, two, three. Hey, great, thank you. <laughs> so, woohoo! Now I've got a photo. Um, so, Kay, can you show me what you did with the talcum powder? Uh, oh, wow. Fantastic. So, I love, you've got a real uh, sense of depth there, Kay. This is great. You've uh, got the sense of depth in the sky. That's, that's it. That's what we've done today. And, and your trees, can you show me again? want to see your trees they're looking great but one's all right and the other one isn't <laughs> yeah because i feel like you just need to put some dark areas in the other one okay so yeah. you've got that variety of light and dark so just a few yeah. more tones in there and that's that's going to be awesome it's fantastic dorothy dorothy can you show me yours Woo! wow fantastic it's it's great See, they're real trees. Oh, I'm so pleased. Susan, your turn. They're fantastic. That's brilliant, Dorothy. Thank you. You don't want to show. Come on. I don't like colour. Oh, you don't like colour. But there wasn't much. It was just a little bit. Just the littlest bit of blue. The smallest bit. Okay. We've gone in with some green. She skipped ahead. Yeah. Oh. Oh, Susan. A rebel. Okay. Oh my God. Okay. You are a rebel. Susan, you've just gone way ahead in your own style. That's fine. And I applaud you for that. Your sky is looking awesome. So you've got to be pleased with that. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. But... I'll work when the screen's off. No, no, no. But I'm just thinking, you know, those trees... They could have a bit of light coming yeah. through them a little bit more, yeah? Yeah, I'm going to start stippling now. Because at yes. the moment they're blocks of green. Yeah, do it now and then show yes. me. Because I think that will, like, you could do yes. stipple, stipple for, for 30 seconds and then all of a sudden tree, yep. they'll really come to life. But I'm so, I'm just, like, over okay. the moon with how everybody's been today. And you, you... You come, you're up to us nearly next week, Jane. You could go along with the blue skies in the meantime. Yeah? yeah. And then we'll all be at the same spot next week. Except for Susan, who's like just created a masterpiece just in the 10 minutes in her own time. extra. 
Yeah, fantastic. So, that, I, I mean... See, uh, Bridget, Bridget's. I didn't see Bridget's. Oh, Did we gosh, do Bridget's? Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, don't forget Bridget. Oh, sorry, Bridget. Oh, wow. oh that's fantastic. I love yeah. it. That's so beautiful. No, but I think that that is very good. I know you want to go for pale because the other thing is this this landscape is very pale landscape. Yeah, there's a lot of like it's it's really airy and really subtle and soft. And I think you've got that down pat, Bridget. So keep that. You want to keep that. That's fantastic. Really Thank good. You. How are you feeling about it? Do you like it? Yeah, yeah, I'm quite pleased with it now. I've done That's some stippling good. and yeah. um, I'm just terrified of <laughs> the, tree, the trees themselves. <laughs> we'll, we'll get there eventually. What, what, what are you terrified about, about the trees? Well, I, I'd probably spoil the whole thing. But um, <laughs> Why would you spoil the whole thing? I don't know. I'm a very negative thinker about my painting. <laughs> oh, there you know. We've got to stop that now. No, yeah. <laughs> don't be doing that because there's no there's no way that you could, you know, this is just a learning exercise. There's no mistakes. There's no, you know, if you stuff up, you can't stuff it up because I can guarantee you as soon as you think, oh, I've stuffed this up, which I, I mean, it happens to me all the time. I completely, I think I completely stuffed this painting, but actually five minutes later after I've gone over the top or reworked it or whatever, it's like that can be the best thing about the painting ever. Like I started to work this background of this dog that I was doing yesterday on Sunday and I thought, oh my God, I've completely ruined this painting by putting in this green blue background. But actually I kept working with it and, and, and it turned out it's, I'm, it could be the best dog painting I've ever done. I, wow. I, I'd never used this phalo blue and green before and I just thought, oh my God, this is just shocking. But it, it actually turned into something else amazing because that whole mindset of like, I don't know what I'm doing and I'm stuffing it up, but then just keep working with that, um, trusting that that you're just going to keep going and you haven't ruined it and you're just learning, then then something good comes out of that I mean this is the whole thing is that you just keep going and your mistakes will be your greatest asset and that that's that's what it's that's what it's all about okay so Bridget all that fear you've got about with the trees I, I can guarantee you will be the most amazing trees if you can just keep going and hold that <laughs> I, I, I swear because it's hi Dorothy yes you want, she's she I can't. She's oh, Jane, come on. I'll show you mine. <laughs> oh, wow. She's put well some blue done. in. That's great. Really good. Okay, so you completely <laughs> kept up with us, Jane. You yeah. sneaky. You sneaky. I <laughs> This is good. Huh? Pardon? Now I can't hear Jane. Oh, can you hear me now? Yes. Oh, funny computer. Yeah, the stippling really helps. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah, it is, isn't it? But I mean, it's there in the picture. Okay, so if we look at our picture, it's 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 there, isn't it? See, it is. It's not tree yeah. and then sky. It's like all simple. It's great. Yeah, so it's going to be... I'm so excited for these pictures. I mean, I think... I think we might have some really nice Christmas presents on our hands. <laughs> but we won't jump ahead just one step at a time. So I don't know if people want to um, uh, oh. just stop and then we'll t next week we're going to get some yellow ochre. That, that would be a good colour to get. And Kay, maybe... Um, Maybe you want to get some um, more talcum powder, no, or maybe some white. I don't know. I'll, I'll try to get some. Yeah. Shop, yeah, I'll, I'll get some. Like, e e even if it's just white house paint from your shed, it'll be fine. Okay. <laughs> you can just mix it in. I mean, I don't know about, you probably want to use a water-based if you're going to mix it in with your watercolours. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. That would be 
yeah, yeah, yeah. An, an important um, thing. But I think the water-based paint will be fine. Right. If, if you want to use that or yeah. go to your shop. Okay. okay, has anyone else got any questions? I'm really excited for next week. So I was going to say, if you've got any yellow ochre, that, that will be our next thing for next week. So it's good mm -hmm. to talk about a little bit what we're going to do next week. We're going to get these warm warm areas. So we've done the core, some core, and then we'll go in. We've done the main core bits. We're going to go with the main warm bit which is this yellow ochre grass at the front of the painting but we're not thinking about it as grass because there's some on the hills there and then there's some in the trees as well okay so we're not thinking grass hills trees we're thinking some yellow ochre bits on our painting and then we'll areas. be like wow areas thank you sarah and we'll be like wow that's just amazing because i find yellow ochre is so awesome just like you just put a smudge of it just and then it's like that is a hill in the background it's just amazing so and i feel like you know we want to keep so we we don't we we want to keep working on the, on the right yellow so you don't want to do yellow lemon yellow instead of ochre cuz ochre is a really earthy tone so we want to keep that kind of earthy landscape happening so if you can get some yellow ochre folks i would really recommend it you know if you want to do it for landscape painting not just next week but for 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 your landscape paintings in the future it's um fantastic right for doing for painting nature okay great well that was fantastic thanks everyone <laughs> Thank you very much, Angie. Hey, I just do, I do. just filmed this. I just filmed this, and I'm going to put it on my YouTube. Shall I send you the link, Alice, and then you could send it to people? Yeah. So if people want to watch it again, say, for instance, you might think, and I might put some notes about the sky underneath the video, because, and I might name the video, like, Painting in the Sky, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> um, and then put, put the notes that I talked about that I've got here about that. Because, oh, because this, this, folks, I mean, this is really gold dust, I feel like, for your landscape painting. You will be streets ahead with, with these kind of notes, yeah? And, and then realising that's what we're doing. Because it just means you can, you know, you can make paintings that, that, that look you know look like proper landscape paintings not that you want to have that idea of what's proper because you know we all want to have developing our own style yeah um so that's what i'm going to do and then i'll send the link to you jane yeah and then if people want to practice doing skies and clouds and stuff um then i'll put some notes in there and you can you can go crazy with your skies lovely have you got when you're going to send it to me, you'll send it to Alice's email. Yes, Isabel. the well-being yeah. one. Oh, yeah, I've got access to that. That's fine. Yeah. Great. Right. Okay. And so when people are out walking in the fields this week, um, you look at look through the trees, the tops of the trees, and see how, you know, see the sky coming through and stuff, how we did today. You know, see the, see the areas around the tree and how much sky is coming through. And that, and how much is coming through will be dependent a little bit on the weather and stuff as well. So anyway, there you go. That's some homework. Brilliant. I feel like Thank a proper teacher. That's Thank brilliant. you, Jane. Lovely. Have a great Thank week, everyone. See you next week. See you yeah, next week. week. I might have some Christmas lights Bye. up by then. It's been fun. <laughs> yeah, good. Now have a cup of tea. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Okay. Just Great. fantastic. Bye. 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 Okay. Great. Thanks, Jane. No problem.